very good morning to you. It's uh, really fantastic to be over here and to share this kind of glass ceilings that we really want to break in our life. And I'm only going to share what I've felt and what I've seen with people who have actually achieved something. So what is it that we really do? We got to define our goals very clearly in life. I came from a medical family and I really didn't know what I was going to aspire for. And one of the thoughts was getting into business. Now business is so big that really the aspiration was only a goal called business. It was only after we struggled to find out various things that I could put the compass in the right direction and say I wanted to choose A, B or C, which became textiles and real estate. And we moved towards that. But unless you don't have a fixation in your mind, no matter how unclear your goal looks at the first period, it's extremely important to start moving in it. In this age and time, we think we don't need to put a goal. We don't need to put a destination. And I find that that is the biggest fault that I have seen in people who actually don't make it to break that glass ceiling. That's the most important thing fall. And that's how I see most of the people defining a goal, moving towards it, and aspiring for it. The second thing I believe that you need to work on in creating and breaking that glass ceiling to reach to the next limit is actually to learn not to look at others as competition. I'm a developer. I'm not concerned whether a developer is better than me or worse than me. I use him as a role model. Aspire and see what good things he does in order to actually emulate their ideas. But in reality, who is the biggest competition to Niranjan Hiranandani? It is Niranjan Hiranandani of yesterday. So if I'm given a lecture five days ago, and I'm here on another lecture, I have to prepare myself in such a way that I am better than the Niranjan Hiranandani of yesterday. And if that is the way we lead our lives, we never go into a depression. Because most of the time, we're looking at somebody else in comparison in order to say, I am better than the other person, or worse than the other person. I stood second, and the other person stood third. That's not the issue. What the issue really is, is what was I yesterday? What kind of buildings did I make yesterday? Am I making better buildings today than what I made yesterday? So I continue to compete, not with X, Y, Z, somebody else, but myself. And the moment I learn to compete with myself, I'm always going to succeed, because I'm only bettering myself from what I was yesterday. That's a thing, and you can always remember that you'll break the glass ceiling because you have continuously bettered yourself every single day, every single month, every single year. You just cannot lose. It's not competing with anybody, and you can do it. Another major thing that I find is that we are able to achieve anything at any age. When I got into the world of business, I focused on it. So at age 48, I was quite unhealthy. Didn't look after my health, wasn't able to do though because I had focused on it. And one day I went to my school, my alma mater campaign school. And I went there and the parents were now required to run a race. What was the distance of the race? 20 meters. And when I ran it, I was exhausted. I was <sighs> really. Can you imagine? And at that time, it struck me. Oh my God, if I'm this way at 48, what's going to happen at 60? You know, and it was quite horrifying to even think about it. So I restarted at age 48. I joined the gym, started exercising. After some time, I also started yoga. And the third, I started running. I'm now 69. I go to the gym three days a week. I go and do yoga two days a week. And at the end of the day, 
I run the marathon of 10 kilometers without losing my breath. So that's the difference that we can all achieve in our lives. It doesn't matter when you are starting a new challenge. It doesn't matter when you will actually achieve that challenge. It is not relevant whatsoever. What is important is it must go into your head that I want to do something. So that's what I could achieve at age 48. So the younger you are and more aspirational you are, the higher that you will go because you have more time to achieve this. Let me give you another example. There's a person I knew extremely well. His name was Captain Nair. He was the person who founded the Leela group of hotels. And do you know what age he started? He started at the age of 62. And he put up the first hotel at age 65. After that, he put up seven greatest hotels in the entire world, luxury hotels. But everything that he started in terms of the hotel business for him was age 62 when he began. That's what life is all about. It doesn't matter where you are today. He was a captain in the army. He left that. He got into textiles. He did many things. He changed. All these aspiration moves are there. So no matter how young you are, no how, matter how old you are, it doesn't, it's not really relevant whatsoever. It's only to get it in your mind. That's my aspiration goal. This is what I want to do. And that's how we go about it. But, 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 what happens to most of the successful people? They fall down. There is not one successful man in my life that I know who hasn't fallen down, who has not failed at some point of time in his life. You must have heard and heard and heard stories of so many people who have failed. I was one such failure. Right in the beginning of my life, when I got into business, I was actually a textile man. I got into power looms, and we set up a small industrial estate, uh, a power loom uh, shed in a suburb of Mumbai at uh, uh, Chandiwali, and at, uh, sorry, Charkop, and uh, we set up this unit. Later, we did some small investments into real estate. At a particular point of time, I was losing money in everything. I had debts, bank loans, and liabilities. And I thought that's the end of my business career whatsoever. And I had to decide which business to give up. And I thought I would have to give up both. Anyway, we sold our textile unit and went on to real estate. And I really didn't know whether I would succeed because even that time I was failure. And we started into real estate and got onto it with full vigor. Today, after 35 years, I am extremely successful into the business. But I had to fall in order to rise again. Because you never learn without having fallen at some point of time in your life. And it doesn't matter what the situation is. We fall, we fall out of love. We fall into difficulties in life, in businesses, in various things. It's good to fall because you learn. And once you've learned, it is better that you will go to the next level at which you want to do. This is what I've seen not only with myself, but so many, so many other people or who want to do it. The other aspect that I have seen in life is the fact that people are not ready to move out of your comfort zone. I'm very comfortable. I don't need to read today. I don't need to do this. I'm very happy if I'm doing this. Don't tell me to do this. I have always done it this way. And the more successful you are, the more difficult it is to change. I'm a very successful person, so I think I never need to change. But we don't understand that the dynamics of the business and the other world is a constantly changing phenomena. Take, for instance, a company called Reliance. If you know Reliance of 25, 30 years ago, 
It was only Vimal. It's a fabric company. It moved in to get into petrochemicals, downward stream into petroleum and other refining capacity, and now into telecom. So all this has changed over a period of last 25 to 30 years to such an extent that changes have taken place that today Vimal is only 1% of Reliance's business. So if we get into our comfort zone and say, I don't want to change my life, you can never grow. Irrespective of what you do, if I'm doing an X method today, I need to learn to make new changes for tomorrow because the environment is constantly changing. The economies are certainly changing. There was a time in India before 1991 when we only had the ambassador and the Fiat car. They were assured by the government that there would be a protected industry for these two factories because they were there historically into India. And new cars came about. And those two companies refused to change their technology, refused to make new ideas of change to happen. So what happened at the end of the day? The two companies went into bankruptcy and had to close down. So that's extremely important to do. So my young friends, it's very, very, very simple. That the moment we move into life and we make changes quickly in order to see the new environment, learn from people who do it. The other aspect that I have seen people to do is you don't need to copy people, but you need to have role models of people. When I, as a developer, look all over the world, I don't copy paste the design of other people. We don't really say, oh, he's done this way building, so I will do this building. But the good developers, the good architects, the good designers are my role models. I look up to them. I emulate this example. I see how I can be better and what I can do constantly better. So what is it that makes my projects successful? Every building that I have constructed today has to be better than what I had constructed yesterday. So it doesn't matter what I have constructed yesterday, whether that was good, okay, great, or fantastic because today I have to be better than whatever it was yesterday. And the moment I make that into a habit of constantly improving myself, I can only become better in all my life. So whatever you have seen me of yesterday, my effort is, can I be 1% better? Can I be 10% better? Can I be a little better? And the day you learn to be a little better today than I was yesterday, you can never, ever lose. And you don't have to look at other people for approbation. Because people may like you, they may love you, they may hate you, they may criticize you. They will definitely, the more successful you are, the more critiques that you have, to such an extent that it is impossible. I want to share with you a secret for students and a secret called happiness. There was a student who went to a holiday resort with his cousins and all. They belonged to a middle class family. So they went to Mahabaleshwar, took a small place, five, six cousins, went and had a good month of holiday there went for swimming, went for horse riding, went for bicycling, went for everything, and came back and posted on Facebook and Instagram all the photographs which were put up. So what happened? They were very happy, made their parents promise, next year you will take us again to Mahabaleshwar because we had a fantastic time. The other friends who were staying nearby also came to play with them. They come back to Mumbai, go back to school, and another boy, he was taken by his parents to a place called Switzerland. Okay, so he was bored. Every evening, everything shuts down by 6 o'clock. He had no other friends with him. They saw, saw Mount Titulis 
and all the lovely places there, but he was bored like hell. But he comes back to school and he tells the other friend, oh my God, where you went to Mahabalesha? You know, I went by business class to Switzerland and I went to Lake uh, Zurich and I went to the Mount so and so. And this child who was delighted and happy suddenly became depressed. Cried, cried and cried, went home in the evening, lands up at home and tells the parents, next year I want to go to Switzerland. I want you to take us to Switzerland because, and you will take us by business class because somebody else is there. So what really happens? The person who had actually a wonderful time got mentally upset. Not because the other boy was having a great time in Switzerland, but because he put it in the mind of this. This is true for life, the whole life of ours. If we look to other people for approbation all the time with external people complimenting you or because of those compliments that you need, you are not going to be successful. You have to learn that you should have that internal feeling of joy of what you have done, what you have lived for, and what you're doing. So whether you're in school, whether you're in college, whether you're in love or out of it, whether you're living life in business or otherwise, if you learn to internalize all these things and get that confidence yourself, which you can, if you better yourself every single day of your life, you can never lose. You can hit the ceiling and cross it. I did, and I want you to also do it. Thank you very much.